How you going? Um, I'm bored, so I thought I'd uh, I'd have a talk about um, a mate of mine that's uh, not with us anymore, and uh, he's a really good friend of mine. And I've spoken to Peter about him, and uh, most of you people out there that are in the tattoo industry will remember my mate Derek Lane. Uh, his name was uh, Dezza, we used to call him, Derek Dezza. Anyway, um, I woke up this morning and I thought, oh, you know, uh, got all these stories over 30 years, you know, like uh, tattooing and that, and um, some of them are quite interesting, and the people that I tattooed, uh, th that um, that got extensive work done, and there was probably four or five of the guys um, over over the course of that time that stuck out in my mind. Well, Desa was was probably right up there as one of uh, one of my best supporters back in the nineties, um, and uh, I don't know if I just mentioned that Des has uh, since since passed on, but I'll I'll tell you a little bit about that later. Um, Derek came into the studio at um, oh, Des Des are coming back and it's still not being called Derek. Did he? No. Why? Well, he's named Derek. It's like an old. Like, <laughs> what's, it, so what's that thing on FM 104? Uh, young man with an old man's name. Mm. Young man with an old man's mm. name. Yeah, well, Derek. Know, Derek sort of. Is it an old man's name? I don't Derek? know if it is. Yeah, Derek. I don't know. But anyway, um, Desa came into the studio and I thought he was on some serious, serious drugs. I thought he might have been on heroin actually because he was just like, <laughs> turned out he was just stoned, stoned. And uh, he was very quiet and very, very, uh, didn't say a hell of a lot um, at first and uh, I was quite cautious of him just because he was so quiet and he was very stoned. So um, turns out that um, Des wanted to get some work done off me and he said pretty basically that he just wanted to get uh, as much work as he as as I wanted to do uh, in the style that I wanted to do it, as long as it was as evil as he could as I could possibly tattoo him, as evil as. And I'm and I'm like, why has it got to be evil, man? Well, turns out like uh, Des burned a fucking uh, a church down when he was about fourteen, and he hated true. So yeah, true, yeah, true, Petey. But you yeah. never told me any of that. Well, anyway. Des told me he used to listen to a lot of like really really cool bands like Deerside and um, oh you want to put it down there yeah. like Deerside we we did most of his tattooing to Deerside which is like a really really hardcore heavy metal band uh, it's a death metal band actually um, and uh, what I chose to do was well not so much evil but um, I I was looking at the biomechanical style at the time. Um, and uh, was very into Guy Atkinson and um, yeah, in particular Guy's work. He was a uh, Guy was a revolutionary in the uh, in the tattoo industry. Uh, him along with Paul Booth and um, uh, who was the other lad? Paul Booth, Guy Atkinson, and the legendary Philip Wu. Anyway, uh, when I had when I was looking at Biomech, I was looking at um, get down there a little bit. Maybe I can get down and get comfortable. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was looking at guy stuff. I had Chris Cashmore up there a couple of times come and work with me, and and I did a couple of sessions on Desert. Actually, the first session that I did on the bottom of his leg, which was a progressive thing, went which was his whole leg, and then went up his side, and onto his arm. So the whole there was one big piece. Is that but that the, really blue, purpley? Uh, it was a black and grey piece. piece. Oh, okay. But yeah. it sort of was on the scale that hadn't really been done in Australia. Okay. At the time, so it yep. was it was a monster piece, you know. Mm. I think it was up about 140 hours by the time we got it up to wow. his side. Desert was um, the uh, one of the, one of the um, national. Well, he followed the he followed me around on the on the circuit. So we went to the nationals in successive years. We I think he won the best black and grey um, leg in uh, in 1998. And then in 2000, we got a hold of Dave Van Zyderfeld and I grabbed a hold of, of Desa and said, do you want to have, do you want to have another crack at a, at a national title? And, um, and we'd do the extension, which was on his side. So back then we used to do a quite, a, quite a bit of extracurricular activities on the weekends. You could call it what you like, stepping out, whatever. <laughs> Get 
<laughs> yeah. So we used to get on acid sometimes, and I would um and I would uh, freehand the thing on uh, while we were tripping, you know, at the party, and I would put it on the text of pen. I said, you know, don't don't yeah. rub it off. Come to the studio tomorrow morning, and I'll knock the outline on. And of course, he'd ring me up in the morning, and I'd still be tripping, and I'd be like, uh, you know, and it rubbed off and whatnot. So we we just did he come did, in? Didn't really get around to it. Well, we left it to the last po- to the last uh, minute to get it done. You know, we thought, yeah, well, right. we need to get this thing on. Um, come out all right? Well, I just abused everybody in the in the studio. I had Warren Laurie there, um, Womp from from Canberra, and they were all sort of getting around. I was drawing it on. Didn't like what I was drawing. I was under pressure and that, and it was pissing me off. And I'm like, fucking get fucking back. Leave me a fucking loan. You've got to <laughs> concentrate piss off and anybody comes close to this outline I'm gonna fucking stab you with me tattoo machine nobody look at this thing until it's finished yeah right all right because <laughs> I was a left-hander and I used to scrawl my lines on still do uh, <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway um so the story goes we go to the convention with Des and um I'm at the bar the bloods black and grey categories called and uh I'm thinking, well, Des is in there, and uh, see how we go because he's got a fucking four, uh, four and a half, five foot tall fucking piece of work to show in the black and grey category. And I look over down the end of the bar, and there's Des standing there, and I'm like, what's going on, mate? And he goes, why aren't you in the fucking room? They've called the category, and he goes, I've been in there, and they said it's too big, it's too what? large, and I thought, like, it's too large. Well, it's fucking what, what? what's large? Large is large, isn't it? So then I said, fuck that, we haven't done 150 hours yeah. for nothing. So I yeah. grabbed him and I bowled him down there and they were just sort of wrapping up that category almost. And then I went in there and I seen, uh, I've sort of made eye contact with um, one of the judges who was Fletch from up at Upper Mackay. And I said, hey Fletch, we got one more, mate. And he said, all right then, no worries. Uh, so everybody's standing with their pants around their ankles or, you know, stretching their sides up or their you know showing their 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 piece which is you know a large category which is anything over the size of a smoke packet pretty much um <coughs> so everyone's standing around and so des walks in well undoes his fucking tweeds drops his tweeds to the bottom of his fucking pe- uh of his of his ankles rips his jeans off lifts his arm up over his head and everyone's like uh and they're looking at this fucking five foot fucking monster thing a uh, big bio piece, and um, which was very, you very. Photos of it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it was in the magazine. Yeah. Well, uh, Fletch said, "Well, we know we won. Let's have a look at who, <laughs> who's going to come second. You know. <laughs> and uh, I was That's very <laughs> awesome feeling. What a cool it was thing. A, well, you know, he probably shouldn't have said that in the thing, eh? But um, I was fucking. I was like, thank Christ that we got to show it. You know, win, yeah. lose, or draw. It's not an ego thing. And um, and I was very very happy for Desa because he was a very mel- melancholy sort of bloke. He was like I said before, he wasn't very um, into the society's rigors and the mm-hmm. religious side of things and the God fearing bullshit and all the crap. And um, unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> yeah, well for Desa, uh, he um, yeah, it he it was a terrible way that he died. It was just an accident, you know. He got really really drunk. He came up from Melbourne and he was hanging out with his family and I think there was some sort of, who knows, that all yeah. wasn't there, so I really can't speak for him. But Des got really, really pissed and, and um, very, 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 uh, very, very, very smashed. And he just was meandering around Wynnum and that, and uh, I'm not exactly sure where it was, but he staggered out onto the road and a car hit him and uh, oh. put him into a life support and he was there for about three or four days. And um, and my, one of my one of my other one of my other great mates, uh, Harvey, Big Harvey, who was the lead singer in the in a band called Sh- uh, Shattered, I think it was, and did a little bit of lead singing for Godright, which was Des's. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm I'm not exactly sure what went on, but Des uh, Harvey was ve- very close to Des as well, and we went up and seen him on li- on life support. Me and him, we drove up to the bloody hospital, and. Um, Des was there and he'd already left the building but they had him on life support and he had this bloody machine gun ka-chonk, ka-chonk, ka-chonk and was keeping him alive and uh, well keeping his keeping his his heart pumping anyway mm. and um, I went over and I put my head on his chest and I just listened to his heart beating and and whatnot and we said goodbye to Des there and they turned life support off and they had to think it was the following day and 
and that was the end of that. But at the end of the day, if you, had, if you ever met Des, he was a great bloke, and uh, we all loved him. He was a uh, he was an igna uh, a, 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 what's the word Enig a, 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 enigma egg nomadic doesn't matter egg Enigmatic or something like that. Fuck, I'm trying. I'm trying way too hard here. He was a good bloke. That's what he was. He's was a fucking ripper. There was only one bloke like Des, and I'm telling you, I fucking think about him every day, and I loved that. Though. I loved him because he supported me. We were good friends, and um, I miss him. And um, yeah, I thought it might be a really good idea just to tell that story because. Um, like Des and a few and many others, though, all oh, when you're tattooing somebody, Part extent. Of your history well, not so much that. It's when you're well, tattooing. They are. They are. Hang on. When you're tattooing somebody extensively, you get to really know them. Well, you make a make a, a really good friend out of them. Not every one of them, but you know, when you're tattooing that many people over that many years, there's a certain percentage of people that become your brothers, and they become your your family. And Des was definitely so one of them. So how long did you tattoo De Des over? Um, tattooed Des from, oh, I think I met him in about 1997, and then I'm not too sure when I said goodbye to him, what year, what year it was, it was something that was put in the back of my mind and not really thought about when he departed, it was in the, I think it was 2000, and he's been gone a while, well over 10 years, mm -hmm. um, and he, he, he actually helped put me on the map as far as my tattooing went because yeah. he allowed me to do something that hadn't been done in him and uh, since um, had inspired a few guys like uh, another good friend of mine Brad Barco uh, who became one of the most uh, prolific uh, biomechanical exponents from Australia and went and fulfilled his uh, potential and worked with the best all over the world and always said to me John that piece was the one that really kicked me on to try and do something a little bit more expressive and large mm. and, and you know do mm. the right scale and all those sort of yeah. things so yeah you know um i thank you des for doing that for me mate and giving me that opportunity and uh yeah that's my story about des and um there will follow up yeah there'll be follow-ups with this thing i'll do a couple more stories if i can remember the big jobs as they go yeah, on the big jobs and whatnot so <laughs> there's pete to see she's not yes she is and I'll tell you what, Des is in the room right now, and he would have loved her because um, Pete is a very, a very much an individual like Des was. So on that note, thanks very much, and um, I'll see you next time and tell you another story. Bye.